Yeah, and so now let's bring in our Eunice Yoon, who joins us live from Beijing. Uh, Eunice, what's your sense? Is there a theme running through these announcements that we've seen that have had such big impacts on these stocks, perhaps closing a rich, poor gap, or at least trying to appear that uh, wealthier entrepreneurs aren't taking over the narrative of the Chinese economy? I think that would be an overarching theme that you are seeing in this effort. Uh, but, but I think also within each field, uh, the purpose of these, these um, tactics are, are really very different and very specific. So, for example, what we're seeing right now in ed tech is um, an effort, you know, uh, the stated goal is to try to bring costs down uh, for a lot of these parents. Uh, but now there's been a lot of complaints and debate about um, whether or not that's actually going to work. There are several parents who have been complaining and saying, actually, um, even though it sounds good that maybe this is going to help encourage us to, to have more children, it actually just uh, makes our costs more expensive because instead of paying for a class for after school tutoring, um, now I might uh, pay a private tutor to come to my home, which could be triple the cost. So then that's been raising a lot of speculation that uh, perhaps among investors that perhaps the end goal there is about uh, political control and trying to make sure that there isn't a whole lot of foreign influence in the education or to have a lot of private um, ideas um, entered into the uh, minds of the children in China. So that's, you know, there's, there, that's, that's one of the big questions there. Um, but then you have something, for example, in, in the, the internet industry and, and, yeah, and unveiling different, different rules. And that's, the end game could be different. Exactly. And Carl references just a few moments ago, is there thinking the two elephants in the room, Alibaba and Tencent, the tech giants, of course, they have not been immune from the scrutiny. But is there a sense that perhaps for them, at least it's over, you do see them working more and more with the Chinese government, whether that be on digital coins or Ant Group, which is an Alibaba affiliate? Do they do they you get the sense that they may be at the end of their rope in terms of the punishments that they could see. It's it's very unclear uh, because we keep um, hearing about all these different punishments. Uh, for example, over the weekend, uh, Tencent, which um, up until only a couple of weeks ago, people were saying, hey, um, Pony Ma, the founder of Tencent, has been doing a good job, really laying low. He's always he's known as, as being somebody who's who's, um, you know, very uh, quiet and not very public on, on a lot of these issues, not critical of the government or anything like that. But now uh, Tencent and then Tencent Music uh, got punished over the weekend, um, slapped with a fine that was a minor fine, only about $80,000, but really driving home the point that um, that these uh, tech companies cannot uh, have a dominant position, even, uh, uh, you know, in, for example, a, a, an area that's that's kind of growing and does have uh, other competitors, uh, such as uh, uh, live streaming music. Mm. Yeah, well, uh, we, we, of course, uh, covet your insight as more of these actions take place and uh, more news comes out. Eunice, thank you.